right. How y'all doing? All right. Well, you're looking beautiful out there. You know, if you're not in New York City, I don't know why anyone wouldn't choose to be here today. And it looks like we got quite a few of you. Excellent, thank you. Perfect. So look, my name is Jeff. I'm president of the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. We represent over 400,000 union workers in the state of Washington. I also am fortunate enough to co-chair the Washington State Blue-Green Alliance, a combination of unions and environmental groups working in common cause. And I'm proud to be here today. And I'm hoping that this is going to be the beginning of something huge. Because brothers and sisters, the stakes could not be higher. We face two great challenges, two crises to shared prosperity. Extreme inequality and destructive climate change. And son of a gun, if the solution to one isn't the solution to the other. So brothers and sisters, we got to stand tall. Our economic system and our trading paradigm is at odds with nature. Unfettered economic growth based on fossil fuels does not sync up with reducing carbon emissions. We're on an existential crash course with the climate disaster where all will be impacted. But those who've had the least to do with causing climate change will be impacted the most. Our children, the poor, the working class, communities of color, those that have suffered the most health effects from the fossil fuel economy will also suffer the most as our water levels rise, as storms intensify, and as clean water and food becomes more scarce. I've heard Governor Inslee say, we're the first generation to recognize and understand the impacts of climate change, and we might be the last generation to be able to do anything about it. You know, with increasing glacial melt, ocean acidification, increased forest fires, super storms, our, this is nature's clarion call to us to get our shit together. You know, I serve on the governor's uh, CERT committee, uh, Carbon Emission Reduction Task Force, and we're looking at things like carbon tax and cap and trade as part of a solution to, to decreasing our carbon emissions to 80% of our 1990 levels by the year 2050. Now look, this is, this is important work. It's controversial work, and it's going to cause economic disruptions in price, in jobs, and the like. It's not going to be a smooth transition. But what's most important is if you and I keep three things in mind as this transition happens. One, that economic justice and equity has to stay in the top of our minds. Those that have suffered most from climate disasters should not be made to pay for it. Yeah. Two. We need a just and equitable transition. And I want to talk from my heart, brothers and sisters. Those workers who work in coal mines, that work in refineries, okay, we need to be able to look them in the eyes and say, we are not going to abandon you because of what the companies you work for did. These folks, these folks have wages, they have health care benefits, they have pensions that need to be protected. It's not about throwing a few training dollars at them. That won't work. We need a just and an equitable transition. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, we have never, ever done that well in this country. We need to learn how to do it. The third thing we need to do <laughs> is we have to do massive public investment in our infrastructure to help control climate change as well as to build the renewable energy economy. I don't need to tell you the things that need to be done. We need to rebuild our water infrastructure. We need to bring to scale energy retrofits. We need to do an inventory of all the public buildings in the state that need to be retrofitted and put them on a schedule and do it. This is not going to be easy. I got 30 seconds left. This is not going to be easy. <laughs> the forces against us are the most powerful forces on earth. But I believe in us. I believe that we can stand up and fight against the austerity budgets and talk about taxing the rich and taxing the corporations. I believe that we can stand up to the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the WTO and say, it's time to stop making climate change subservient to trade rules. 
So since I'm out of time, I'm going to leave you with this. Let's see if we can get you going. No false choices. No false choices. No false choices. No false choices. And you know, you did pretty good, but you know what? They can't hear you down at the waterfront. No false choices. No false choices. All right. Nice job.